Howdy folks, how we doing? Uh, just out here working on this old Ford. Um, basically, brakes didn't work at all on it. Uh, I shouldn't say at all, they barely worked. I'm pretty sure it was just the front right um, uh, caliper that was doing anything based on what I've seen so far. So anyways, Basically, what we're doing here is uh, essentially a really, I mean, really, it is a full brake job. Um, so, uh, got a disc brake conversion kit for this thing. Um, see how this thing goes to better or st together. It's been a long day, anyways. Uh, a couple brackets, um, some GM calipers, um, looks like some brake lines. Uh, didn't come from Summit, that's from something else. Uh, I think those are just some seals. So, yeah, um, that's what we got going on here. And uh, looks like, you know, the hardware kit, all that. So hopefully these, this kit should have everything that we, I need to get this thing put together. Uh, so that's kind of what we got going on for the rear. And then the front, just doing all new uh, calipers, rotors, uh, brake lines, um, yeah, so pads, obviously. So, you know, step one, obviously, we'll pull off our uh, good old tires, wheels, um, get um, pull out our axle shafts in the rear, just with your bolts around uh, the hub here. Um, and then at that point, like I say, the axle shaft just slide on out. Then you got to get your big, uh, uh, you know, your big um, nuts off of there. And so anyways, on the other side, I got everything off. So I'll go over there in a second and show that to you um, and see what it, show you what it looks like. So that's that side. Uh, as far as the front's concerned... Um, like I said, this, I think this one was the only one doing any type of braking, but, uh, just pulled off the, um, the hub and other than that, the calipers obviously are off, the brake lines, all that stuff's been stripped off. And, uh, yeah, there's that side. So I'll show you the other side here where I've got everything taken down a little bit further. So... And here's the rotor on, this was the driver's side rotor. You can see how grooved it is on this side. I mean, it's just terrible. And there's metal on metal, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so anyway, so I'm gonna have to separate, uh, separate this from the rotor and then get that onto my uh, new rotor, obviously. So um, there's kind of a different shot there for a spindle. Get over here, um, you know. Everything's pulled off. So, you know, from the other side, basically to get it to this point, you just pull out your um, your your locking nuts that set the preload and pull everything just straight off and catch your bearing and good to go. So that's where I'm at with this guy. I'm gonna get this thing all cleaned up. Again, I'm gonna have to get all that pressed off and get pressed back on. Uh, definitely need some new hubs. Um, should probably be doing that this time, but um, I don't think that's in the cards for this uh, round of things, considering how hard it is to get parts and stuff right now. Unreal. Just ordered a bunch of parts for about five different vehicles, and it was... Uh, I don't even have a great word for it, but uh, absolutely terrible. So trying to source all of it and actually get anything in so and then here's the rear oh let me grab the light and get back over here so all right so there's our rear um as you can see there's virtually no pad left on the um uh, the shoes um spindle does look like it's got some wear in it i could you know it's not quite smooth so i'll have to you know just take some uh, fine sandpaper and get it, everything all cleaned up. Um, then, yeah, so basically at this point, since these are going to get converted over to discs, 
the next thing I'm going to do is just pull off this entire uh, backing plate. Everything's just going to come off. I'm just going to zip it all off with the four nuts there, four bolts, what have you, and get this that off. So I'm actually looking forward to doing the rear way more than doing the front. And um, so just assuming that that kit goes together well, I'll see how these brake, this brake line uh, nonsense is going to be. Kind of That's kind of one thing that I'm a little bit uh hesitant of and how it's going to work out so we'll see there and so that's kind of where we're at at this point um yeah definitely you know you can see some you got some cobwebs in there i don't know if it's showing up very well on the camera there we go in the light but yeah this thing has just been obviously sitting for so long that um yeah it's I'm amazed it actually stopped at all to be honest with what i've seen so far and Let's see how getting the rest of this stuff is, or the rest of the stuff off is. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, I'll probably have to, um, yeah, I'll, I don't know if I'm going to change the diff food in there. If I can get the rest of this uh, done, put together quick so I can get, um, get, get it out of the shop here, I will. But I don't know. It might be one of those things where I just don't have time to change the gear oil in it. I might just top it off to get make sure I got proper level that I've lost a little bit through the axle tubes and so on. So that's the story at the moment. But kind of a hopefully, hopefully will be a easy project the rest of the way. I don't know those those front um, separating the actual hub from the rotor on these trucks is always a chore and. Um, not really looking forward to that and yeah so that's it i'll what i'll do is i'll update you guys and um you know with some progress and then also what it's like when it's completed and go from there so i guess uh yeah at this point other things this is the first time i've ever had three three vehicles in this in this bay of the shop it's seven degrees outside right now but um, not that it really has much to do with it, but um, yeah, so it's cold. Um, so like I said, three vehicles in here, got this old six foot Ford bed here, or sorry, Ram bed that I'm trying to sell. Gotta still mess with this fuel tank for the Ram. Uh, goodness, this just project after project. I got other parts sitting over there for the Ram that have been sitting there for two months. We uh, can't find time to do much of anything, so. I will uh, catch up with you here in a little bit. All right, folks, back here again, working on this here green Ford uh, disc brake conversion for the rear. Uh, this side got the spindle all cleaned up, ready to start putting other stuff on, and I'll go show you what the other side here looks like. Uh, yeah, let's get over here. And so here we go. So here is the other side with this uh, disc brake conversion kit on it. So overall, pretty straightforward to go on there. And uh, I'm not a fan of how what kind of brake lines they kind of send you for this. But uh, anyways, whole another deal. So I'm going to get the other side done here. Catch up with you later. Howdy, folks. Uh, a few weeks later here, finally getting back to this thing. So I'm gonna about to crack the rear diff open here, uh, just changing the fluid. So um, yeah, basically gonna show uh, show anybody this process has never seen it. It's uh, not actually that bad, but um, let's get some better lighting here. It's probably about as good as it's gonna get because I'm gonna need some room to work, but. You know, um, basically just uh, pulling the cover off, going to, you know, drain this thing out and fill her back up. So uh, you'll notice that I pulled all of the bolts out except for the top one. So the cover doesn't go everywhere and make a hell of a mess when she comes off of there. And uh, so that's kind of that. Now, I'll uh, see if I can see how sometimes these things come off, you know, real easy. Other times, you really got to work at them, but... Oh, this one might... I need some work. Alright, 
Yep. Yeah, yeah, so I always just try to start with that to see if anything shifts on you. This is how I do it, but now it doesn't look like it, so I have to get in here with something a little bit more aggressive. Uh, now, you don't want to damage this face if you can avoid it. Oh, so that's, oh, there we go. There she popped now. There she is. Now we can see she's starting to drain out there. Now, if we just weasel uh, your better hand. There we go. Oh, there we go. Knock that over, why don't we? Uh, okay. All right, so let's see here. It's just kind of a measure. Now, if you got another screwdriver or something to wedge in there, well, this isn't terrible, but... Um, I think it, I definitely lost a bit of fluid because it was it was about from the fill from the fill over here on the cover it was probably about a half inch low if not a little more so um, so now I'm just lightly prying it so obviously the cover's not all the way free at this point in time and then uh, you'll know when it goes all the way free there see pry it through the rest of that. So it looks like they had a paper gasket on here, which, you know, I've never used a paper gasket on any diff that I've sealed. I've just been an RTV kind of guy. Um, but I don't know. I think there's goods, pros and cons to each method, to be honest. But um, I don't know. Then, you know, you got O-ring seals on some of these new, new aluminum covers, which I don't know about that, but. I've using uh, um, RTV the the gray the gray RTV. I've never had a cover leak on me at all. So I don't know. To me, I think the the RTV is kind of the way to go. But on this one, I'm gonna try a paper gasket just because I've never used one before, and I could tell that's what was on here. So I'll just put a paper gasket back on her and call it a day. Now. Since I've got it open now, I think what I'm going to do is just let this stuff, because I'm not going to get into, I think tonight getting after it and trying to get all this thing cleaned up. So I think for tonight, my plan is I'm just going to pop it open like so, and then um, let, it, let it drain um, like that overnight. Get all the little stuff, because, you know, if you've ever been around gear oil, you know it's nasty. And it just takes forever to really drain off of anything and I'm not in any hurry. So just let it do that and sit here for the night and then come back tomorrow and pull the cover off and off to scrape all the, the, the face off and get it all nice and cleaned up. Might hit, the, hit it with the wire wheel a little bit. Um, have to scrape off all that old gasket material and you always kind of got to get a little and down in this lower part you know there's going to be some of that fluid that just pools so i always try to get in there with a couple rags and get it out get all that so um anyways that's just kind of my process to it i'm sure there's a hundred other ways to do it but i'm well, probably not but yeah you know um now if this were my pickup i would probably just be swapping the, the cover um to something else just because i like aftermarket covers uh especially ones with drain plugs so you don't ever have to pop your cover again um so that's just my preference um you know i really like the dana 60 AR arb covers um i got one that's on the, the white ford in there and it's it's quite nice so i would definitely put one of those on here um they're beefy so Anyways, well, uh, with all that said, I think uh, for the moment, I'm just getting the last bit of the brakes uh, on this thing put back together, and then she's going to be ready for a brake bleed here real soon, as soon as I can find somebody to come help me pump the brakes and just do all that with me, and uh, then we'll get her out on the road and see how this uh, disc brake conversion worked out. I mean... Looks pretty good from under here, right? I mean, not bad. I gotta, I gotta figure out what to do with all emergency brake cables. 
I might not mess with them for a little bit and just kind of think about how I want to run um, all the cabling and I got to spend some time and inspect everything else that's connected within that uh, emergency brake cable system all the way up to the front. So anyways, with that said, talk to you soon. Howdy folks, back again here. Um, so still messing with this uh, 76 F250. Um, just wanted to show you this disaster that somebody did. So, uh, yeah, you're not supposed to have 12 holes. You're only supposed to have the six. And uh, so obviously somebody must have at one point cross-threaded these. And then you can see how buggered up some of them are, but there. And uh, so uh, somebody took the t all the time, I guess, and they couldn't find another hub and just clocked it and drilled and tapped them again. So, uh, you know, I don't think it'd be potentially an issue with one of these, considering, um, you know, just the nature of how beefy these are to begin with. But, um, you know, unless you're doing some serious wheeling with some uh, lots of torque, high horsepower, something, big tires, I don't think it'll ever be an issue. So anyways, got, uh, yeah, the other side is in good shape, but. Uh, and somebody went through all the trouble, whoever drilled and tapped it must have had one that's not as deep, so I'm going to have to figure that out here in a minute, but yeah, one of the bolts is shorter than the other. I didn't even notice all that when I was pulling this thing apart, I was just going quick as I could. And anyways, so I then got some new, uh, just some mile marker hubs going to throw on this thing. Uh, the rear brakes are done, uh, emergency brake is finished on this. And um, I'll crawl under there um, on another quick clip that will be next uh, and kind of show you what that ended up looking like. But yeah, so it has uh, new calipers all the way around and um, some new brake lines. There's some of the existing old brake lines on here still, but uh, then bled them all out. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to get this guy thrown in, but I just want to show you this. Uh, like I said, this kind of disaster here that's going on. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, they even went through and, like, put RTV on this and on the factory uh, locking hubs and just, it's just a disaster. So, this thing's been in here way too long. Um, yeah, so, I will catch up with you in another clip in a few. All right, folks, back for the last clip of the uh, what is it, 76 Ford uh, brake job. Uh, this thing's just been kind of a nightmare, back and forth, back and forth with broken stuff. But anyways, so kind of some continue on with the broken stuff. So this was on the driver's side hub. Um, so it's a locking hub that was on the driver's side. Somebody just siliconed this thing shut. And they took the mighty fine time with it, too. Let's see if I get it out there. All right. And they cut a perfectly round, you can kind of see it, piece of wood to fill it in where the uh, switch would normally be. So there's that. And then the driver, or let's see, the passenger side, excuse me, um, you can see well, that's not right. Uh, so that, at some point, um, I'm thinking it was maybe these set screws that were set too far in um obviously different screws because these ones look in fine condition but at one point they line up perfectly with these three spots where the metal's just completely worn away this thing seized up tight doesn't want to rotate um yeah so there's that and there's all silicone together and then this was also again the side that i showed you in the last clip where you know the um the uh, person had clocked it and retapped all their threads. And uh, needless to say, so now up here, I'll go through here and then I'll do a quick uh, um, get under there real quick and just show you everything, especially with the um, uh, disc brake conversion kit from Lugna 4x4. But um, so I've got the new hubs or locking hubs on here. This This hub needs just to go. I mean, so on the hunt for one of those for sure. Uh, one of the threads are, is definitely not tapped all the way in, so 
can go get a tap maybe and run it um, in further on this hole right here. You can see it's kind of sticking out. Um, I've threaded it in about, it's probably only in about a quarter inch, but it's tight and I think the threads are just jacked up, but all these threads are pretty bad. Um, I think they're all holding fine, but ended up using uh, two inch screws on here. So they've got about an inch, um, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter somewhere of bite to them within the actual hub itself. So um, yeah, so I've got some new mile marker hubs on there, seem decent. Um, you know, I'm a more worn guy, but I think for the purposes of this, anything's better than what was on here and, um, these should last just fine. Um, so then let's see here. Oh, in case anybody's wondering, these wheels are off, I think a 2020, uh, Ram 2500 and the tires factory takeoffs. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll get under there here in just a second, try and keep this as short of a clip as I can. Um, yeah, same thing over here. This, this was, this side was fine from the hub, everything that was fine. Um, yeah. And I don't know if I mentioned it in any of the videos or the clips, but the, um, uh, that other new caliper, the thing was absolutely jacked up. I had to grind on it, a horrible quality control from a new caliper. So, um, yeah, it's got rid of some of the, the e-brake is functioning now with the new, um, um, disc brake conversion kit from lug nut. Here's all the old parts yet again. So we got the old crappy rotor, some old seized up backing plates, brake shoes, drums, the old seized, um, parking brake lines. So all that stuff's new, right? Um, yeah, you know, you can tell, I mean, critters. This stuff, this stuff probably hasn't been moving in years, decade maybe, two couple decades. So let me weasel under here now that I've showed you all that and show you what this all came together like under here. And all right, so there is the disc brake conversion kit uh, from Lugnut um, using GM style calipers. I'm not crazy about the um, the height of my. Um, uh, cable so I might in the future reroute this I just I was thinking about going up and around but then I mean I could I mean this is technically supposed to be the right side caliper but then obviously it shoots that down but you need the ble bleeding valve up so I don't know what the best routing is and you're not supposed to put I think more than about a seven inch radius in the curve so I don't know, but anyways, got um, I gotta cut these zip tie off. But I grabbed new sp some springs today from the hardware store, crossed them, and hooked them on. So now that way, if the suspension does drop or goes on a lift, um, these will just pull down with it and stay nice and tight. So that should work well. Um, yeah, so resealed the diff. Um, used a paper gasket and a little little touch of RTV. Um, I trim that paper gasket a little bit, um, the blue piece that's showing there. Um, yeah, so there's the other side. And so with these, you know, kind of following the uh, e-brake cables, went up to the factory location there where they went into, and I will scoot around there real quick. Um, let's see, what else was I going to mention over here? I do, before I drive it, I'm going to scrape away all the crap and make sure that vent is actually working because that, uh, I don't think it is. Go under here. That's some beauty, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, we've got, there's our e-brake cables joined together right here at the factory location. Had to you get um, an adapter um, to do that right there on the factor so that's the oem cable right there that i'm pointing to there's my adapter into and then all this is new here factory spring seems to have good tension on it still um yeah so there's that um this drive shaft has quite a bit of well this one's probably the best but this one does have play in it um from this yoke let's go forward now to this beautiful transfer case and I didn't mess with any of this, but this was something that when I've been under here, I noticed. So here is um, basically my shaft from the engine to the divorce T case. And 
she's got a little bit of play, but the really bad one is this one, the front to the front uh, axle. Look at that, that's like terrible. I'm surprised it just doesn't fall out of there. So there's where some lots of noise is coming from. Nice leaky oil pan, didn't touch that yet. Um, so it needs a freaking muffler. Um, let's see. All right, so then there's our new calipers on the front and the front. So standard, nothing crazy. I mean, it was disc brakes to begin with. So we've got new hubs on here and otherwise, um, yeah, hopefully she'll stop on the road now and we try and take it out tomorrow and get it just up to a little bit more of a speed and see how she runs. So with that said, I will cut this one short because I'm sure this, by the time I add this clip in, uh, it'll be quite a long video. So take it easy and any questions, comments, please drop them down below. Catch you later. See ya.